Yes, guys, East of Highbury, episode four. Andrew Whitelaw here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We've got Keir Dalavar Hughes in London and Edward Russell on the bottom there coming at you from Singapore. Uh, when we began this show, guys, it was fairly bleak. It was a bleak start. Since then, things are looking up significantly. A bit disappointing, the Leicester result in terms of what could have been, but a one all draw. I don't know, it's all progress, really. Is that unbeaten in four now, uh, going into the North London derby? How are you feeling about things, guys, generally? We'll start with you, Edward. Decent, the Leicester game, but frustrating, I guess, the takeaway. Yeah, so I messaged, well, I mean, Keir messaged the group and asked, you know, what are we hoping for? And I said, obviously hoping for a win, but I would take a draw. I'd be happy with a draw. After that, I'm not very happy with the draw at all, to be honest. Um, we should have won it. We were incredibly wasteful in the first half. And it came back to bite us. Uh, I think Vardy was on side, to be honest. I do think he should have been sent off for that high boot on Mustafi. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know how important these two points are going to be come the end of the season. But it did feel like... It didn't feel like a loss, but it felt almost like a... Yeah. Here? Um, look, I, I, think we played, I think we played well. I was nervous going into Leicester because... I, uh, man to man, I think they're the better team. Um, but we, we, especially in the first half, Ed, um, you're right, we were wasteful, but we seem to be marauding. Yeah, we seem to be um, getting after it. Uh, there were tackles flying in. I was quite happy with, with Xhaka. Uh, and to have a little bit about us, and we looked to be able to match Leicester, which I didn't think we were going to do. Of course, I wanted the win, but I thought we could maybe nick a win. Whereas actually we outplayed them for the majority of the match. And yes, it stung. It stung the equaliser. Vardy is impeccable against the Arsenal. Always has been. Um, you know, do I think they deserved it? Uh, I don't know. But I think more important to focus on the fact that um, we, we, we were on the same level as them. And, and before going into the match, I thought Leicester are a better team than us. And I had to recheck my, my stepdad. My stepdad goes, oh, you're, you're, you're only one nil up against Leicester. And I said, well, Leicester are really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for me, it was less about the result. Yes, it was disappointing to get the equaliser, but it was less about the result and more about us turning up and actually showing that, you know, we can compete with these teams. Um, no, yeah. So lots, lots of positives, lots of positives. You're right. I mean, looking at all of our players... There isn't really one that I got frustrated by who I felt let the side down. I think everybody put in a good performance. The only one I would say is probably Lacazette. And how many times have we seen it? Look, I like Lacazette. He's, he's strong with his hold-up play and he really tries to bring in other players. But in a match where you don't have many opportunities, we need him to take them. And he continues to waste the opportunities and not score goals that, that ultimately prove decisive. And I don't know really what to do with him, especially now in Ketia's uh, suspended. I mean, I guess we're going to have to play him, but looking ahead to next season, is he a starter? Is Nketi a starter? I'm not sure. I still feel like we perhaps need a second striker, assuming uh, that Oba stays. Whisperings from the club seem to be, or, or is it the Ornacle, that we'd way <laughs> prefer to sell Lacazette, which makes perfect sense given their numbers. And we could probably get decent value for him given what he's produced or not produced in recent times. And we'd much rather keep Aubameyang, which makes sense, doesn't it? But I'd love to think in a perfect world that we would just get the best out of Lacazette and, and he would stay and everything would be wonderful and we'd march off into the Champions League sunset. But that's not realistic. I think, uh, think Arsblog said that he's never seen a 28-year-old look 38 as, as Lacazette has in <laughs> recent weeks. And, it's true. There, there is a glimmer of light in the way he took his goal at Wolves, though. I thought that was vintage. It looks like he'll go. If we can flog him, he will go. I'm just disappointed, actually, at this point uh, that Balogun is going because I get really hyped about young players. He's smashed in goals for fun. And when we've got to endure all this praise of Mason Greenwood, I thought Balogun was going to yeah. be our next real gem. And I don't feel the same way about Eddie and Ketchy. He said no one disappointed you in the game. I mean, poor old Eddie 
it's kind of the impetuous. <laughs> he wasn't even you. in the game to disappoint me, I guess. Yeah, I know. That won't be good for his uh, development, will it? But young players, they do that. It's just a keenness almost, isn't it? it yeah, it is. I mean, look, um, I've been watching Eddie. I'm a big, look, look, I was a big fan a couple of years ago. He went to Leeds. You know, he's a local lad. I really want him to do well. I just wonder, um, has he got... Has, has he got the minerals? He's played in quite a lot of matches. He needs to put away, you know, rather than, oh, that just went over the bar from Enketia, they need to go in. And that yeah. is the difference in the Premier League. It's, it's, the, it's the slight edge, isn't it? It's, either it hits the bar or it goes in. And is Eddie, is Eddie the kind of guy that's, you know, like Ian Wright, like Aubameyang, that the ball goes in the net by hook or by crook. And he's just proven time and time again, unfortunately, that he's just, he's just a little off the mark. I mean, a lot of hypotheticals. If Aubameyang stays, which I think we're kind of feeling like he might now, right? 250, yeah. it's only 50,000 or more a week than he wants. He's happy that Saka and Martinelli uh, have extended their contract. He's not going to be able to play every match of the season next season. Is Nketiah a starter for Arsenal? I don't see it, to be honest. When I see no him running in, up there, no one I think, envisions that, surely. Well, then we need somebody else, right? Martinelli, though. Martinelli steps up and starts a lot more games, doesn't he? The guy can play at centre-forward, right, left. I'd love to see Martinelli start at least 25 games. I don't think that's asking too much next season, do you? If we're in Europa League, we'll be playing an awful lot more than that. I mean, you look at Greenwood, right? And that's because he's got Rashford and Martial around him. We've got, say, the Rashford and Aubameyang, but we haven't got the Martial. And I think we need another top quality striker in that front line. I don't know. It's difficult with Lacazette because if you look at his career, he is top quality. I mean, he's a French international, banged them in at Lyon, has, has scored goals his entire career, banged them in at Arsenal at times. Was that player who I liked the way he would always put his foot through the ball. He would find a way to power it past the goalkeeper. And, and when you're a striker yeah. who's not informed, sometimes it just doesn't go for you. I mean, there's a good stop from Schmeichel, who had a great game. Uh, I'm, I'm but when was, when, when was the last time he was in form? Ages ago. Ages ago. Exactly. But, uh, but as I said, like, uh, there, yeah, there is... You're, a... you're right. Our, our, goodwill, our goodwill is running up because I, lo I love Lacker as a player. I love, as you said, Ed, uh, the hold-up play, his age... He's finishing at times, but I just think he's such a confidence player and his confidence has fallen off. Of and that's striker. You don't have confidence. The ball's not going in the net. Interesting that you, uh, you spoke about how he used to put, the foot, uh, put his foot through the ball. Um, like as Ferdinand, you know, he wasn't the most refined of strikers, but he would just bat it half volley and it would and be like, right, keeper going on target. It's up to you. Um, Lacazette did show he was a classier finisher, but his, his confidence just dropped off a cliff, and I don't know how to get it back. Yeah, and you're right. He's not even his his first thought is to to lay it off to someone else these days. Whereas the the lacquer of old would just see the ball, strike it, go for goal. He's trying to look to pass the button to someone else now because he just doesn't have the confidence. And you're right. I don't know how how to get that back. I've got to leap to his defence just and point out one game ago, came off the bench, took his goal absolutely brilliantly, rifled it in the corner. One game ago. So let's see what happens against yeah. Spurs right. now. Yeah, right? I was going to no, say, he's probably going to score a hat-trick against Spurs. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, there's one player I want to kind of focus on a little bit going into that Spurs game, and that's Danny Ceballos. Got plenty of love uh, for, for that goal he scored uh, the other week in, in the Cup against Sheffield United on this show. And uh, rightly so, I think. The way he's performed, I love how the Arsenal Twitter saying that he got a pre-assist, that that's a thing that we kind of laud now. <laughs> but uh, Danny Ceballos, if you listen to Arteta, he seems like a player he wants to keep. Now, I had my doubts as to whether we really have to weigh up these kind of things now because we don't have much cash and I think it will cost £40 million to keep him. Whether or not we can extend into a second season loan, I'm not sure. But he suddenly looks the player we hoped he would be, particularly alongside Granit Xhaka, because he's so good in possession. He's everything you expect from a Spanish centre midfielder. And if he can chip in with more goals, which you imagine he can, and he's still very young, that could be a huge positive for Arsenal, because I've spoken about it before. Centre of the park is an area we're really lacking. And uh, 
So, so focusing on the here and now or, or this weekend, we've got interesting uh, options going into that Spurs game. Lacazette, does he start? So Bios, you think, is a shoe in on current form. What do you reckon? Yeah, just on Sabayas quickly, he's a great midfielder and he goes forward, which is what we've really been missing in midfielders as of late. You just kind of pass it sideways and then go backwards again. He's given us the added impetus. and He's always looking to, uh, to get the pre-assist, if not the assist. It seems like Arteta's pretty much settled on his team now, right? I mean, the back five is pretty much the back five. Shaka and Sabayas in the middle and I guess the same front three or Pepe comes in for Saka. Do we feel like Saka's kind of needs... A, I know he had a bit of a rest of, against Wolves, was it? He, he didn't start. But he seems like he's not really the Saka we're used to. I know he's, he's such a young lad, but he's not affecting the game as much in the past What do you couple. mean? He got a sick assist, dude. He's got a, go- he's no, got a but, goal and he's got a great assist, uh, you know. But, but apart from that goal, he didn't do anything else that match, did he? No, no, you're right. You're right, but... We could look. We could we could launch that. At, um, you know, Abamyang. Um, a yeah. lot of the time, Abamyang is quiet for sixty minutes, and then he pops up just like Ian Wright and scores a goal. Saka, the way he sat down, Johnny Evans, um, was just beautiful. <laughs> it, it was really beautiful because Johnny Evans didn't know where he was going. I'm cutting in. I'm going out. And he, it was just literally. It was almost a head nod. See you later. He's on the floor, and it was a sh- and, and it was an easy goal. So. He, yeah, class. Um, but you said, I think, Edwards, um, a couple of weeks ago, you said, you know, th- these players have got a lot of potential, but, you know, can we rest the club's fortunes on their young shoulders? And mm. I think that's the stage that we're kind of at. And, you know, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about Pepe, um, because let's not forget, we broke our transfer budget for Pepe, and he does look class in pockets. Um, so when you, talk, when you talk about Rashford having Martial, um, you know, to back him up. Bloody hell. Aubameyang and, Pepe, uh, Aubameyang and Lacazette have got Pepe. He's, yeah. he's supposed to be absolute class. So, um, look, I, I, have to, I, I disagree. Saka's coming up with the goods when we need them. What we don't need is players that play well for 80 minutes and don't contribute. I'd prefer if he doesn't contribute for 80 and pops up with a goal or a lovely assist. I don't know. That's, That's a good point. Inspiring, isn't he? Come on, let's be real here. The way he took his goal was superb. He scored... Uh, he's assisted so many goals this season. I take your point in terms of maybe don't risk a Jack Wilshire, where he's 18 years old, play him into the ground because you have to, which is kind of what happened with Wilshire, and look where he ended up. I take your point if, if you say that maybe we need to be a little bit careful and manage him. But in terms of quality, he's keeping Pepe on the bench for a reason. Like Saka has been the revelation, arguably, of our season. He's been super. So, so, so he has what, to start the North London derby, surely. Well, I was going to ask. So Pepe is because Pepe sat out because he just had a kid, right? So if he's coming back in for the North London derby, what is Arteta's preferred front three? Is it Saka, Pepe, and Aubameyang? Does Laka drop to the bench? That's, it sounds sexy to me. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. It's Saka, Pepe, and Aubameyang. If they're firing on all cylinders, then watch out, Tottenham. Um, yeah I'm with you isn't that interesting though because a few weeks back when we were on the back of the Brighton lot look I know there's issues top to bottom at the football club there really is and it's a big big job for Arteta but it's crazy how a few results start to turn around the outlook I know I know there's still a degree of criticism but you're right I mean Aubameyang Pepe Saka and that's Martinelli out injured, who's only getting better. That's uh, who, who am I missing? That's Lacazette, who might, by some miracle, find his form again. But suddenly, you're like, hang on a minute, that is very sexy. That's that's delightful. That's exciting. It's not really translated into as many goals or chances as we would have liked. But I'm seeing, I've got faith in Arteta to get there. Building blocks. A big win at the North London derby, man. What would that do for the club at the moment? That would that would be massive. I think what I've also been impressed with about Arteta is a bit like Wenger when we went through all those years with all those horrible players, Squalachi and Sylvester and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Arteta knows the players he has. I think he knows they're not fantastic players, but that's the best he's going to get. And I think that's why he decided to, to sign Pablo Mari and, and Cedric Suarez, etc. And he realizes that, look, I've got David Luiz, I've got Mustafi, 
I'm going to have to play a back five. I'm going to have to try and find a system that enables them to be the best that they can be. And I've just been really impressed with that because Emery, for example, would just continue with the system that he thinks is best and all the players would have to work their way into trying to, to, to play in those positions, which undoubtedly never worked because um, those weren't their positions. But I think Arteta has now figured out a way of getting the best out of these players and, and we're really seeing that. Kia, yeah. could we be in for a bit of a cheeky surprise with some of these? Because I think it's probably the correct and sensible assessment of the likes of Mari and Suarez, that those are the signings of our level, of our financial capability at the moment. But the enthusiasm Arteta has for both of them makes me just kind of raise an eyebrow, if I could raise an eyebrow, you know? Uh, Suarez, <laughs> that goal. I mean, the fact that I think Arteta was kind of glowing about him, saying that, like, nobody at the football club, well, none of the fullbacks have the same sort of capabilities that Suarez has. And I was like, oh, hang on a minute. Portuguese international, he's won the Euros only 28, you know, had a bit of bad luck with injuries. Have we, because how often have we criticised Arsenal for signing poorly and not finding those gems, not finding those bargains either, you know, not waste, like wasting money on, on spending too much on players or just, just buying free transfer, Silvestres and Squilacci. Is there an opportunity, is there a chance that Arteta has got a couple of gems in Mario Suarez or is that wishful thinking? It's the philosophy of the football club, isn't it? And I think what Arteta has done, first of all, I'm really, really impressed by all his media appearances. He looks composed. He's, you know, he's, he's got the backing of the club and, 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 and you can tell. So media appearances aside, he's playing the cards that he's dealt. Whereas Emery was too rigid. Uh, he couldn't communicate. He couldn't communicate with the media, so he couldn't communicate with the team a lot of the time. Arteta seems to be composed and he's, he's playing the cards that is dealt. And yes, maybe we are going to, you know, I was, so, I was so happy with that half volley from Suarez. Yeah, it took a little deflection, um, but he's getting after it. Tierney, yesterday. I like the fact that you could give the ball to Tierney and he's going to put it in the six-yard box. You're playing the cards that you're dealt. Yeah? And um, Arteta seems to have a little bit more of an understanding. And I think that's why... In general, Arsenal fans are happy to be a little bit more patient with Arteta because we buy into this whole philosophy, basically. So, yeah, look, Champions League's out the window. Um, Is it? Well, I mean, Chelsea seem to have should just we, grabbed it. we just r remind ourselves of the league table? Uh, Chelsea are on 57 points, United in fifth on 55, Wolves in 6th on 52, the Arsenal 7th on 49 and then Spurs on 48. So we're going to have to make up a gap of, we've got 49 points, Chelsea have 57. I mean, only five games left. It's tough. Chelsea that, in that, I, as well. I think that draw against Leicester, just if not mathematically, almost psychologically put us out of the Champs League. Don't uh, and I, I, I cannot wait for your uh, optimism here. Um, well, I mean, we have to wait and see what happens to Man City as well, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Just quickly, so on, the, on the subject of Suarez, I was reading, so, I mean, it's probably the mirror of the sun or something, saying that we're listening to offers for, for Hecky Bayer in. Um, I guess he got rested for one match and Suarez came in and the journalist thought, hang on, is this a sign of things to come? But he hasn't been as good as he was before the injury, but both of you lads agree worth keeping? With, with this has come up before. I think Tom Usher mentioned it uh, on a show that you weren't about for, Kia, but I think it's difficult to talk about Hector Bayer in without getting affection and uh, that kind of thing involved in it. He's a big part of the football club. A lot of people suggested that he should his captain material. He, how can you not like Hector Bayer? And I'm proud that he plays for Arsenal Football Club. And I have affection when I look back at him before he got injured in terms of how quick he was and weighing in with goals against Liverpool and, and stuff like that. Yeah, he hasn't been the same player, has he, if we're being honest with ourselves? And these are the ruthless decisions a manager has to make. If we could get 50 million for him, I think we'd have to look long and hard about that. I think I'd be slightly heartbroken if it happened. But... We would probably would well, have to look at that, wouldn't we? Keir, Keir can't even consider the possibility, and that's why he's <laughs> just left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. 
<laughs> um, um, Jerry, there? Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, gents. Um, there he is. Sorry, gents. My step, I'll let my step you, I'll let you answer, a bit of DIY. You know, I'll let you answer that question, though, Keir. Uh, Bayern, you know, uh, is he going to get back to his best? Do we have to be ruthless and try to cash in there? I mean, it's it's a it's a really interesting topic. Be Be Bellerin relied on his pace so much to be an excellent footballer, and let's have it right. After the injury, he's lost. You know, we talk about players losing a yard of pace. I think he's lost four, four yards of pace, <laughs> and now he has to rely on his footballing ability. And I think that because he was so quick and so rapid and such a gooner, did we really look at his yeah, footballing anything. ability? I, I, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that we looked at him, we said, ah, he's a right back, he's not a great defender, but whatever, uh, because he's so rapid. So, he, he, the, the, the jury's out, the jury's out. I'm certainly not going to say let's get rid of him, but he is the kind of player that will command a high price. Um, my personal opinion would be, let's see, let, let, let's see what happens for the rest of the season. Uh, listen to offers, but... You take, you take Bellerin out and, and you take out a real fabric of the Arsenal Football Club. And I think a lot of the younger players like Saka, like Emil Rowe, like Eddie, they will look at Bellerin as an example of how you can make it in the club and how you can make it in London in, in a certain way. So it's a strategic sell, um, but I don't think that... I think we'd be jumping the gun if we just got rid of him because he can't run anymore. Such a tough one. I'm going to be ruthless. I'm, got, I'm offering you 50 million in cash right now. Hector Bayer in. 50 mil. You take it. I'd take it. Edward? No, nah, I'd, uh, I'd keep him. I love him too much. But, <laughs> I mean, what does that mean? Suarez is our number one and, and Maitland-Niles, who still doesn't want to play that position, is our, our number two right back? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like taking a step forward and then taking two steps back again, isn't it? Uh, I, I think know. we're not used to having two good fullback options, and that's why we're a bit confused that we're able to keep both of them. Um, but it's, it's it makes me feel a bit sick, actually, the concept of selling Bayern because we need the money. Is someone yeah. who's the heart and soul it, it, of the it, club? It sounds a bit mercenary, doesn't it? It sounds a bit, yeah. It sounds very Chelsea. It sounds like not very Arsenal. I don't like And I mean, I'm sure he had opportunities back when he did have those extra four yards to go to, dare I say it, a bigger club. And he stuck yeah, with Barcelona. Up. Back to Barca. Yeah. Ah, old Chestnut. <laughs> right, let's look at a little bit specifically now at that Spurs game, right? So they're a point behind us. Uh, what do you want to see out of that game fundamentally? I mean, if you were to have two or three things that you must see in this game, a victory would be would be up there, right? <laughs> and a performance. Uh, but what do you think, Edward? I was going to say, we must win. Um, I'd, I'd like Aubameyang to really dictate the play. As Keir said earlier on, he's getting the goals, but he still does seem a little bit out of the match for, for large swathes of it. So I would love to see just a really fluid performance. Laka and Oba and Pepe, or, or, or be it Saka, really nice interchanges, free-flowing football. Love to win, obviously, um, and a clean sheet as well, which, considering the way that Spurs have been playing in recent times, would seem like a, a decent hope. Oh, one more thing. To get Mourinho really, really riled up, like another Lucas Moura handball would be fantastic. I like that. I like that. I'll have that, yeah. Mourinho, I think, is kind of a natural product him being pissed off is going to be a natural product of us playing well and, and getting the result, right? But I think there are, there are a few important things that you want to see from a North London derby. Given what happened at Brighton and some things that have been discussed in recent weeks, yes, there's been progress, but I'd still like to see more in terms of us addressing our perceived or real lack of fight, right? We have been accused, and probably rightly so, we're still being bullied. And I think, and I back Arteta to change that, but I really need to see it in this North London derby. I really need to see someone like Granit Xhaka lead and be strong in the tackle and assertive in the way that we play. But the other thing I have to see is some discipline. I'm so sick of us giving away penalties or own goals in North yeah. London derbies. You know it's Harry Kane. You know it's going in the back of the net. We have to keep our discipline. Kind of a 
it's very easier said than done, isn't it? Asking us to be strong, robust in the challenge, but keep our discipline as well. But those are the two things I really, really want to see. I want to see us boss them. Uh, it's such a big ask of this Arsenal team to see us assert ourselves and boss it. I think if we can, it's almost a philosophical problem that we need to solve over a period of years, not just one North London derby, but sometimes a result can have, it can be such a tonic that you can then take forward for months to come and we can take that into next season. A huge performance here, sad Mourinho, man of the match display from one of our central midfielders and great mature performance from our young players. That could really carry us going forward. So I don't want to kind of emphasise the importance too much, but you know what it's like when you win, when Arsenal win a North London derby, Cesc Fabregas, I think, was talking about one of the famous ones where he scored from kickoff. That's still being talked about. And, and these Arsenal players need to realise that they still will be talked about if they put on a famous performance in the derby. So, so it is a massive one. It, it always is, right? I love that Fabregas one. They were still rolling the highlights of the previous goal. And then they're like, oh, God, they scored again. Um, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And before the Leicester game, like, I've talked about how well that back five is going, that makeshift centre three pairing of uh, Mustafi, Klasnach and, and David Luiz. And before the Leicester game, I would have said, I'm a bit worried that when they come up against a top quality striker who tends to score against us in Jamie Vardy, they're going to struggle. And I would say the same about Harry Kane, really. We know how much he loves to score against Arsenal. Do you think they were able to, to boss Vardy and keep him quiet in that match? Or did you feel like it was only a matter of time before... Vardy found the back of the net against him. I don't know about bossing, uh, but I do think the defence, you know, looked solid. I've been happy with the last four matches. I think they've looked a lot more organised and the back five seems to be working really well. It seems to suit Louise. Mustafi seems rejuvenated and even Kolasinac has looked more or less justified his place. Bear in mind, he's keeping out Socrates and holding, right? So... Look, I've seen progress, uh, and, and if, 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 as we go into the end of the show, we're going to go to a score prediction. I think it'll be one all. I think it'll be one all. Uh, but I do think that we are going to stand up. But I just don't think we're going to do it to the level we need to. If we did that, we'd get the victory, right? Um, I, think, I think we'll show some good stuff. We might get stung by Harry Kane again with a penalty. That's what I think is going to happen. You know, I, I, can, I can see the wall and all, and I can see it panning out exactly the way as it did against Leicester, where on top in the first half, we'll take a relatively early lead and we'll try and nurse that one goal lead through to the final whistle. And our defences are going to be breached just towards the end and Kane will do what, what Kane does against us. Well, sadly, Keir ducked out on us. But we'll, get, uh, <laughs> we'll get his response to what's hopefully a resounding Arsenal win on the weekend uh for now though guys thanks for watching if you stayed to the end of the show and saw both Keir and Keir's departure thanks for checking it out give it a share and if you're an Arsenal fan you want to get involved we're very welcoming if you, if you want to share your opinions uh up the Arsenal come on North London Derby let's do it